Next up, I want to bring on Kion from Monad to tell you about the architecture for Monad and some of the benchmarks from their recent testnet launch. So without further ado, please welcome Kion on stage. All right. Hello, everyone. Great to be here. My name is Keone Han uh, from the Monad Foundation. Um, today, I'll be giving a little bit of a different presentation. Um, basically, I just want to very briefly show um, some visualizations of the network and some examples of really bashing the network with some really computationally intensive transactions. And then I'd like to invite everyone here to try it out themselves. And I'll have a link to try it out. So if you have your laptop, feel free to um, open up to the web page that I'll, I'll show in a little bit. Just to give a very quick background on Monad, Monad is a new EVM layer one, but really it's a technology project that's bringing high performance to the EVM through new architectures that we think are really needed in the space. Um, Monad is building currently in private, but Monad's code will be open source uh, prior to mainnet. And more generally, our goal is to introduce new architectures and technology to help push the entire Ethereum space forward. Um, oh, sorry, going the wrong way. All right, so maybe just to start, I'd like to show a quick video of, um, this is just a screen capture from gmonads.com, gmonads.com, and it's just a, visualization of the network. Hopefully this works. OK, there we go. Yeah, so you can just go to this website and um, visualize the network right now as it stands. Um, the Monad testnet went live about, um, what day is this today? Tuesday, seven days ago. And it's quite exciting. There's uh, basically been increasing traffic um, every single day. Um, and today we saw about. 250 transactions per second going through the network. Um, this is a fully globally distributed network um, with nodes in many different countries. Currently, um, sorry, I'll go back. Uh, currently, uh, 57 validators with the expectation of 100 to 200 validators in consensus at mainnet time. That 57 is just a little bit random right now, but that's, that's what we went with for day one of testnet, and we're now on day seven. Uh, Monad has 500 millisecond block times and currently has a budget of 300 million gas per second. So that's 150 million gas every half second um, with this fully globally distributed consensus. Um, I think I can probably skip this slide because I just showed it. All right, so we'll just keep moving quickly. This is a pretty familiar contract if you if you've used Foundry ever, um, it's just the counter, so it's the default um, smart contract. And then I've modified it a little bit just to add some really dumb functions uh, in addition. So you have the increment function, but then I added another function called increment many, which just does a for loop. Um, and then I also added a couple of other functions, which um, push many and uh, free many, which just push a bunch of variables onto an array and thus um, use or free up storage slots. So this is a really dumb contract. Um, I did this in like an hour today before my talk because I was procrastinating. Um, so apologies that it's not more elaborate, but I think it still shows um, the overall computational throughput of, of Monad. So with this contract here, um, I ran a, uh, well, anyway, I wrote a script that basically will call that contract. Um, and so specifically it calls that increment many function with an input of 400,000. So that's just gonna do a for loop from one to 400,000. Um, and it costs 141 million gas. Um, and it landed in, uh, well, anyway, it, it, it completed in 1.1 seconds. So it basically took up a full block. Um, and the transaction has is there. And then there's a link to the Explorer, but I wouldn't expect anyone to be able to type that in. Okay, so again, that was increment many, so just showing that 
we can submit a really computationally expensive, really dumb contract, um, a really dumb transaction, and do a ton of work on Monad. Um, so next I did, uh, oh, sorry, that's just a screenshot of Block Explorer. So next I did push many, so this, I passed in, I just tried different numbers, did a binary search, and I think the max was like 6,700 or so. Um, so I ran push many with 6,500, so this allocates 6,500 storage slots. Um, if you're an EVM person, then you know that each storage slot, um, like allocating a new storage slot costs about 20,000 gas. Um, so this is quite expensive but it cost 146 million gas, and again, it landed within um, one slot, so it completed within about a, actually, I don't have the, input, the output there, but it completed in about a second. You can check the Block Explorer. So basically what we have is a really high performance, really high throughput environment in which anyone can build anything and worry a lot less than we do right now about gas optimization and get really high performance and get really fast finality as well because Monad um, has one second finality and again, is fully globally distributed. Um, but I don't want you to just believe what I'm saying, I want you to try it. So what I've done is I've put up a, a GitHub repo. It's pretty bare bones, actually it's extremely bare bones because I did this in like an hour. Um, but github.com slash monad dash developers slash speed dash test. Um, feel free to fork it, modify it. Um, basically, it does the stuff that I, I mentioned. Um, and then in addition, I also put up a really bare bones web app, um, monad-speed-test.vercel.app. Um, it's password gated, and the password is pragma2025. And the idea of this website is that it just allows you to do those same things that I did, um, but with the input, your own input. Um, so, some people might be trying that out right now, but here's just a screenshot of the website. So it just you know allows you to choose the function name, um, the argument to the function, and then also run a number of copies if you want to. So um, this basically is just an example of me calling that with 350,000 five times, and it lands in the next five slots. So once again, you can go to monad-speed-test.vercelda app and password pragma2025 and try it out. Um, have fun. So that that website is actually tied to an EOA that has a bunch of Mon tokens in it, Pestnet Mon tokens, so that you don't have to pay for gas. But the other thing is that um, I would love for every, anyone who's here who wants to play around, who wants to write their own um, dumb contracts that use a ton of gas and that are really inefficient um, to get some Testnet tokens as well. So if you go to that first website, there's also a link to um, a Google form where you could drop your address and then, um, uh, uh, my colleague Kevin will send you some tokens right now so that, yep, it's right there. He'll send you some tokens right now so you can try it out as well. Um, yeah, so I'm just super excited. Um, Monad has been in development for the past three years. Um, it's been a huge effort and we're really blessed to have the support of so many in the crypto community to make this happen, but um, it's been a huge effort to build new architecture um, which I'll talk about in a second, to enable this level of inefficient gas contracts that are really dumb um, that can build anything. All right, so that was just a quick um, you know, link to the website. Hopefully you guys are trying it out right now, sending Kevin your um, testnet token requests and he'll send, make you a testnet token whale right now. Um, just to explain a little bit about how this is possible, how uh, Monad has gotten to 300 million gas per second um, on testnet day one or day seven um, with a uh, expectation of raising that limit further to a billion gas per second um, by the time of mainnet in um, a couple of months. Um, I can give a quick summary of what we've built and how this is possible. So first of all, just to give a quick summary, uh, Monad's fully bytecode EVM equivalent. So that means you could take any bytecode uh, built for the EVM and redeploy it without any recompilation. Um, it supports the Cancun fork, so um, T load, T store, M copy are supported. Um, the same opcodes costs as Ethereum, so everything still just works the same way. Um, the RPC is compatible with Geth. 
Um, so you can use the same eth underscore get logs or eth underscore get balance or eth call or all that works uh, the same way. Or if it, anything doesn't, just let us know and we'll, we'll fix it ASAP. Um, 500 millisecond block times with one second finality. Um, and as I said before, the gas limit is 150 million gas per block or 300 million gas per second. This is the limit right now. It's artificial and will continue to raise the limit as time goes on. Um, and right now on day one of testnet, there are 57 globally distributed validators uh, with expectation of over 100 validators at the time of mainnet. Um, there's a link to a uh, longer article which explains how this is possible and um, also check out the docs. How is this possible? Um, just to mention really briefly, four major improvements as well as a number of other um, smaller improvements. There's a new database that fully supports um, the Merkle Patricia tree in which all Ethereum state is stored. Um, the Merkle tree is really powerful, but also really expensive to keep updated. So this is a huge undertaking to build a database that natively supports the Merkle Patricia tree. Um, additionally, Monad supports um, OPE, or optimistic parallel execution, for executing many transactions in parallel um, and taking advantage of the high throughput and parallel access capabilities of this database. Thirdly, Monad introduces asynchronous execution, which is decoupling consensus from execution to raise the budget for execution substantially. And lastly, Monad introduces a new consensus called Monad BFT. And I felt that since there wasn't really time to you know, talk about all of these things, and um, the more important thing is actually just the demo and letting people try out the demo afterward, um, I figured we would just only talk about one of them. Um, asynchronous execution, and the reason why I wanted to talk about it also is because um, it's becoming a more, um, it's becoming a topic that I think is of greater and greater interest in the Ethereum research community as well. Um, there's a ETH research post about uh, potentially introducing asynchronous execution to Ethereum as well, and I'm super excited about this because um, I think that it reflects our belief at the Monad team that we're just introducing new technologies and we want to see them get adopted through the broader crypto ecosystem. So I will explain very briefly uh, how asynchronous execution works and I hope it's helpful because um, this may be something that Ethereum, the Ethereum community more broadly considers as well. So just to explain a little bit about the background, most blockchains, including Ethereum, have interleaved execution. And interleaved execution means that a prerequisite to coming to consensus is each of the nodes executing the list of transactions that are in that block prior to, in the case of the block proposer proposing the block, or in the case of the other validators voting on a block. And so I've kind of shown this in a really simplified, dumb way. Um, which is that consensus is like, you know, the orange uh, rectangles in this diagram that take up most of the block time, which makes sense because consensus is expensive. This is nodes that are all the way around the world talking to each other, uh, potentially multiple rounds of communication. And because execution is interleaved within consensus and because execution has to happen before consensus, this really squeezes out the amount of time um, for execution into a very small amount of time. So when we started building Monad, we had this goal of um, 500 millisecond block times. Actually, our goal was originally one second block times, and we've been able to shrink that since then. We had a goal of having a block time of, let's say, 500 milliseconds. And the reality is that if you have that goal, um, then there, consensus is very much going to take almost all of that time. There's going to be very little time for execution. And that's kind of what you see here. Blue. But you can't even even see that it's a blue rectangle, honestly. But the blue rectangle for execution is very, very small. So asynchronous execution is just, it's actually a really simple idea. Um, it is the idea of moving execution into a separate swim lane where it can run in parallel as soon as consensus completes. And so you can kind of see here that consensus is happening on block n minus two, then n minus one, then n, then n, and so on. And each time, as soon as the block finalizes, then execution starts on that same um, set of uh, that the transactions that have just been consensus upon. And as you can see here, this doesn't look like that big of a change right now, because although we've moved the execution out, it's still kind of doing the same thing. Um, but then 
what you realize is that we can actually raise um, the size of those blue blocks, the, the size of that blue work that's being done substantially. And so we can basically have a much bigger time budget for the execution. And so that's what we can see here in this last slide is that the blue block for execution is much, much bigger than it was before under asynchronous execution. It's a simple idea. There's some um, little wrinkles around spam prevention as well as um, some wrinkles around um, making sure that all the nodes still arrive at the same state uh, by introducing a delayed Merkle route. Happy to answer any details in the questions or later, but uh, just to give a quick summary, asynchronous execution massively raises the budget for execution so that ultimately a fully globally distributed blockchain with nodes all around the world can have a lot of budget for work that can be done. Um, and that combined with several other optimizations, which all stack on top of each other, ultimately gets us to a billion gas per second. All right, so once again, um, the Monad testnet is live. This is day seven now. Every single day we've seen a growth in usage from about 30 TPS on day one, um, growing almost linearly now to somewhere between 250 and 300 TPS. Um, here are some links. The chain ID is 10143. Um, you can try out the RPC. Um, you could look at the block explorer. You can check out the network information. And you can check out testnet.monad.xyz um, if you want to try out some fun applications that have deployed already on, on day one of Monad Testnet. And once again, you can try out the demo. You can um, push PRs to my really crappy code base. Um, and I would love for everyone to try to break Monad and try to see how much work you can push through the network. Um, once again, really um, honored to be here and excited about the future of EVM um, and the future of Ethereum scaling through um, various optimizations. Happy that Monad is live on Testnet now. Thank you.